In this episode of Wanderlust, we meet up with landscape photographers Eric and Stephanie Lowenbach. We visit one of Ansel Adams' most famous spots, Trespass, discover Tufa, and make burritos. We're Chelsea and Tony Northrup, professional photographers and YouTubers who travel the world in pursuit of beautiful sights, interesting people, and stunning photos. Not only will we be traveling the world, but we'll be doing it with you, our viewers. Join us on an adventure we call Wanderlust. <laughs> but um, I like this coffee. It's horrible. Yeah, that's the, the Chemex thing. Oh yeah, I've been reading about it. So what is that, that's Stephanie? Perfect. This is a Chemex coffee maker. What kind of coffee are you making? Sumatra. Right. It's a so it's a pour over technique, it's right? You have to, like a process. You have to you have to get the filter wet first. Um, no, I've never gotten the filter wet first, and I might not do the process as precisely as uh. Uh, more intense coffee lovers might. But it always turns out pretty well. I've never seen that movie, Winter's Bone, but I feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> Got up early this morning and. Let me tell you, the worst thing in the world is to get up and you need to go to the bathroom and then realize you need to get dressed and go to an outhouse when it's super, super cold. <laughs> anyway, uh, I went to set up another time lapse and I thought I'd use this cool uh, Donkey Kong style minor cart rail and I stumbled across an actual entrance to one of the mines. It's pretty cool. After Cerro Gordo, we drove down that hair-raising road with the cliffs on one side and drove up to Manzanar, which is an internment camp from World War II where the U.S. government caused all people of Japanese descent to live during the course of the war. It was kind of sobering and interesting to read about this unfortunate disaster in our history where so many people's lives were upended needlessly. This monument at Manzanar is pretty famous because Ansel Adams photographed it. And it's going to be really difficult because contrast is going to be really important to the composition of this. So as I'm looking at it now, I can take a picture of it. And that's not bad, but the, the biggest problem that you see there is the monument itself is white and the clouds behind it are white. So it, there's no contrast to make our subject pop. So I could come back at a different time of day and hope the clouds had moved, or I could wait around a little bit, but I could also change my angle and uh, get that blue sky behind it. So what I could do is move to the side here. I could also get really low to the ground. Another compositional choice you have to make is whether you shoot at an angle or shoot it square. So shooting at an angle will add more depth, it'll show the form of the monument, uh, but if you shoot it square, the, the mood changes to be uh, more serious and even stately and important. So let's try it square. He shot it almost square, but not quite square. I can't explain that <laughs> compositional choice, but his picture still turned out fantastic. One more choice you have to make is shooting wide angle versus shooting more telephoto. Uh, here, that choice is going to be made by how much of the background you want to show. So get up close and shoot wide angle if you want to show lots of the mountains, but have them be fairly small. Or you can back up and zoom in, and the background will, you will see less of the background, but the background that you see will be much bigger.
And we took a lot of photos there of uh, the graveyard and the various buildings. And uh, even though it was midday light, I thought the light there was was beautiful because there were there were clouds that left over from the rainstorm we'd experienced at Cerro Gordo. After Manzanar, we drove up to Lee Vining, which is uh, a town on the Eastern Sierra, right on the highway that leads up to Yosemite, which was our ultimate goal. until late spring. They don't begin plowing until after they're sure the last snow has come through and it takes weeks, sometimes months. Uh, so they're really open, only open from early summer until late autumn. The rest of the time, you're not getting through. Okay. That's Can one. I say something to the camera about, yeah. uh, about Eric's tour? He's really nice until you're stranded in the middle of nowhere and then he judges all your choices. One star. Actually, I used to love to shoot and look at that backdrop. Oh, you're just beyond it? it? Now I should start loading it again. This guy. Oh! Good. Thief! Oh, thief, this guy. Thief! Now it's gonna look like we're stealing his shot. There's this beautiful scene at the side of the road and um, reality of it is I wanted to get closer because I thought it would be prettier but there's all this trash here uh, so I had to kind of block that out and your compositional choices aren't always unlimited you know you always imagine oh you should have just moved a little to the left or the right but you're working with the real world. Stephanie repeatedly got the best shot at different locations with her phone like we stopped at this abandoned house and I feel like I got good shots, we all did, but Stephanie had the sense to actually go inside one of the homes and just with her phone shot through a window and I thought that was the best shot of the day. Thank you. And not into all the big gear and stuff, but she has just a fantastic and artistic eye and I think that's a really important lesson because with landscape photography, you know, if you want to make a huge sharp print, you probably need a big camera. But the most important part is just, just being there with whatever gear you have, and, and she's a great example of that. Before I did this, I didn't realize this pan didn't have a cover, so I need to transfer it to a pan with a cover. Mm. Like a boss. We stayed in a three-room cabin at Lee Vining and uh, got to see Tony's burrito cooking up close. In fact, he made a burrito dinner and then we had burrito breakfast and I think I still have those burritos with me deep inside because they were so delicious. I'm just gonna keep part of them in my stomach forever. <laughs> Quite an endorsement. Those were awesome burritos. <laughs> yeah, we have one pan. Oh, guacamole. It's like a rice pan. It's like a pot. That would have been perfect. <laughs> but I think I'm good now. It was kind of fun going to the local store there and using what limited ingredients they had, but I think we found just about everything that Tony normally uses for his burritos, so yeah, it worked out. They were excellent. I put the wrong one in. Serendipity. Mistakes uh, happen, it's okay. The one with the graveyard. We really should have just left like 15 minutes earlier, it's okay though. It's my fault, I've been drinking. I told you. <laughs> You're in a hurry. At Lee Vining is a place called Mono Lake, which has these features called tufa, which are basically limestone stalagmites. So I didn't know tufa was a, like the name of a thing. I thought it was just the name of this place. No. What's a tufa exactly? So I think it's calcite deposits that happen underwater when a certain mineral water, uh, mineral laden water bubbles up from springs into a, another body of water. Oh. And it forms these towers of minerals and then the water around, when the lake goes away, it leaves these formations. 
Oh, I've never heard of that. So it's these weird white fingers sticking up out of the lake, like bones. I busted my ass on that tufa. I fell. It really hurt. <laughs> They're so beautiful. So the first thing you think when you see them is, this is incredible and beautiful and it looks like an alien planet. And then the smell will get you. It's very stinky. So we're out at this crazy place and it smells like shit. I don't know why. Um, everybody else is kind of just walking on the surface, no problem. And I took a few steps and I just sunk right in. And now my shoes are just completely covered in this smelly stuff. And I guess I'm going to be barefoot the rest of the trip. We went the night before driving around to figure out which tufa we wanted to shoot. And we decided after visiting a couple places that we wanted to shoot at the South Tufa, which are the more prominent and eerie looking tufa. Once again, it's another beautiful place to shoot because the Eastern Sierra is a, is a nice backdrop with the snow-capped peaks. And uh, when the light is right, it can be really an amazing place. In our next episode of Wanderlust, we shoot Tufa at sunrise Visit Yosemite Park, meet the Kyle Wolf, soak a camera, and visit a salt flat. Love travel and photography? Subscribe to our channel to see more of Wanderlust and other photography tutorials. You can also check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography, if you want more in-depth tutorials.